Blessed that is the man that walketh not in the council of the heathen, that sitteth in the seat that is can't fall. But his delight is in the love of the Lord, and in this Lord I see I did it sunrise and sundown. Him I go dear like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth fruit fruit in the season. Him live never I go wither, and whatsoever him do it shall prosper. Yay! The heathen them now they saw them dear like a chaff with the wind driven away. Therefore the heathen them never go tan upon judgment that the sin among them in the congregation of the eye trust for the Lord God Jah. Never the way of the eye trust and the way of the sin among them always and always. I will perish. Let my people, the people of the most high God, say Joe Kadamawe Grumabi Tela e Igzag beer Tanaista Lina Ba Shante 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 Shante. Kadamawe Grumabi Tela e where two centuries meet in the name of the most I Jah and that's so Jaja de if Jaja never build up your house the builder I go build it in vain same way if Jaja never watch upon your house the white man I go watch it in vain the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and them is safe many are the afflictions of the righteous but Jah shall deliver him from all of them and I give thanks and I say unto your name King of Kings a lot of laws the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah Amasa Yahuda Yahuda Amasa Negusto Negusto Daniel Ama Koma Ataya, I manna pio 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 aya. Karma we gruma be a tila e. Where twos and trees meet, a death so jaja de. As long as they meet in the name of the Most High Jah, member say, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High Jah shall therein abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I and I give thanks. I and I give thanks. How ma wuso bolisa adanu wato ewo asikle afo. How ma wuso bolisa akpe 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 kaka. This is the black pot, aka Kuku Shodemo, where we speak truth to power. And my name, Black Rastana. In every traditional African home, there is a black pot, and each time this black pot sits on the fire, there is something really sumptuous and nutritious cooking. Now, the interesting thing is this: ingredients of so many different types and shapes and colors, aromas, and even flavors. Put aside all their differences and relocate into the black pot, and then they produce what is known as food. Now, the food does not even benefit the black pot, neither does it benefit the ingredients in the black pot. The food benefits us, the eaters. Same way, the black pot represents the continent of Africa. And the ingredients represent us as a people. We might put aside all our differences, differences of skin shade, differences of uh, uh, creed, religion, faith, and come together to produce not food, but development for our people, our continent, our land. This is the black pot and this must be the three planting generation. The Joshua generation. We know we will not live long enough to benefit from the shade of the trees. But does it really matter? When we know the next generation will benefit from this. This is the pot. That pot that is black. And this is the man. That man who is black. My name Black Rasta. And of course we are live on Pan-African TV. Africa's only Pan-African TV. Also live on Loud Silence TV. We are super live on uh, Ghana Web TV, and we are live on Black Empire TV. This is in the service of God and country. And here we don't do politics. What we do is known as patriotism. And the interesting thing about us is we deal with the mindset. Now, if the mindset of the average African is right, every other thing will be righted. Africans dwell so much on roads, hospitals, and schools. And they term that development. But there's no development without a development upstairs. 
think about that. That is why we are dealing with the mindset of the people. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushodavo, where we speak truth to power. And of course, the first story runs. And what does it say? Watch it. It says what? Ghana Independence Day celebration. Wasteful. Ghana Independence Day celebration. Wasteful. The independence of Ghana is meaningless unless it is linked up with the total liberation of the whole of Africa. Is the whole of Africa liberated? Nkrumah said it is meaningless unless it is linked up with the total liberation of the whole of Africa. Have we achieved that yet? Are we striving to be able to achieve that? Are we working towards uniting the whole of Africa? Liberating the whole of Africa? And what does it mean to say liberation? Is it just that liberation of chasing the so-called colonial master out and getting a national flag and a national anthem? Is that what Nkrumah referred to as liberation? Nkrumah gave us two types of liberation and both of them must be satisfied. In his speech in Conakry, he addressed Ghanaians from Conakry and said, to be able to achieve that kind of liberation and independence, we must have political independence, which is the independence of the national flag and the national anthem and chasing out the colonial master. And two, we must have economic independence. Does Africa have that economic independence? Does Ghana have that economic independence? If not, then the independence is incomplete. The independence of Ghana is meaningless unless it is linked up with the total political, economic liberation of the whole of Africa. Somebody says, the Ghana Independence Day celebration is wasteful. Who is this person? Former attorney, General, former boss of all the judges and lawyers of Ghana. This is the former CJ, the former Chief Justice. That is the highest level any legal person can rise to in this country called Ghana. That's why I started by saying Attorney General. The judges and the lawyers, they are all under the CJ. The highest office any legal practitioner can occupy in the profession. That's this woman. She trained under Nana Akufuado. Recently, she came out and ruffled a lot of feathers. What did she say? She was talking about the so-called DDEP domestic debt exchange program and she made it clear that it will be a shameless country that will run after its aged squeeze them out of their money in order to protect their self-inflicted injuries economically this is the cj sophia akufu wonderful woman what is she saying run that Sophia Akufu trends after Independence Day comments. Former Chief Justice Sophia Akufu is drawing praise from Ghanaians following her comments on the celebration of the Independence Day of Ghana, which falls on Monday, 6 March 2023. The former Chief Justice in an interview with CTFM spoke about the need for the government to reconsider spending funds on Independence Day celebrations. She said that Independence Day should not be reduced to just merrymaking and marching. I think whatever money is going to be spent on this celebration with everybody going to the Volta region, if they had selected a deprived district and built a new school or selected a ramshackle district hospital or health center and upgraded it and named it independence school 
or Independence Hospital, it will be good. Then every year, they pick a region and a project and do it. That would be money better spent. This will inure to the benefit of the people and it will last. But they are going to talk much, eat and come back and then that's all she is quoted to have said. Most Ghanaians on social media seem to agree with the comments made by the former Chief Justice. Some Ghanaians on Twitter are saying that there is no need to spend hundreds of thousands of Ghana cities on Independence Day in this current economic difficulty. A twip commended Sophia Akufu for her comments and urged other leading figures in the country to take a cue from her. God bless former CJ Sophia Akufu. Unlike the scumbags who call themselves elders at Mate, Asante Enchi, Onyina, Otabel, Opuni, Frimpong, Gifti Afeni Dazi, etc. A trip wrote. Wow. Come here. My brother, my sister, Ghanaians in these times are becoming more and more conscious. In the days, people complained that the little children would be asked to come and march in the hot sun. A lot of them would collapse out of dehydration. A lot more, in fact, would go home with some kind of ailment that we will not even be able to diagnose. All because they would stand in the sun for hours, march in the sun in hours, for hours, whilst all these so-called leaders, including the president, would be under the shade. Does it make sense to you? Some of the children go home sun-stroked. Some of them collapse under the sun. Yet the president and all his appointees are under the shade, watching the children display sun-stroked. The chief justice, former chief justice says, no, please, make sure that you pick a certain area in Ghana. And say that this year, the Independence Day Fund is going here to build schools, to build hospitals, to build roads, or to build that and to build that. Independence Day is not necessarily celebrated with matches and singing and all that. We can have that on TV. TV time could be given to these celebrations. President comes out, you pick one or two children from different schools around bring them all around in a tv space celebrate it is enough once in a while you could come out and do a celebration like this but you cannot be celebrating when the people are overly hungry you cannot be celebrating when you are running to the imf and looking for money you cannot be running around begging for money and then you still spend money celebrating your begging of course, it is very, very important to celebrate our independence because it liberated us from the cross of the wicked colonialists. In the same vein, if we are eagerly running to the same colonialists to beg for money and beg for that and beg for that, with many of our citizens requiring that the same slave master should come back and rule us, then what is the importance of our independence? Somebody would want me to repeat it. We chased out the colonialists because we wanted freedom and independence. Today we are running back to the same colonialists, begging for money with a lot of our citizens, asking the colonial master to come and take over the country again. These are the questions we are asking. My brother, my sister, come here. Now, the interesting thing is that this year they decided to go all the way to the Volta region. Probably the former president, John Dramani Mahama, was there campaigning. In fact, he started his whole campaign for the 2024 elections in the Volta region, which is traditionally a stronghold of his party, the NDC. So they strategized probably to try and break the wings of the NDC in the Volta region by giving them an Independence Day celebration, the last one. 
before they leave office. So they went there and invited the former president to be there. The former president went there, but he boycotted it a few minutes later. Why did he do that? Watch this. Mahama boycotts Independence Day in Ho. Says it has been hijacked by NPP. Let's read. Former President John Dramani Mahama has said he will not be part of the Independence Day anniversary in Ho today, Monday, March 6. Now the theme for the event will be our unity, our strength, our purpose. Mr. Mahama accused the organizers of the event of turning the occasion into a political party, Jamboree, where new patriotic party supporters are bust to cheer up their leaders. Mr. Mahama stated that the Independence Day celebration is a national solemn day and should not be hijacked by a political party. Speaking at the National Democratic Congress Professional Forum dinner and awards night in Accra on Sunday, March 5, Mr. Mahama, who is seeking to be elected flag bearer of the NDC ahead of the 2024 general election, said, I just came from the Volta region. Listen to this. And just when I was living, they were preparing to celebrate the Independence Day. I have stopped going to Independence Day because it has become a party jamboree. I went to Tamale and they told GDC to take the camera off me. They bust their supporters in and filled the whole stadium. When I got into the stadium, the place was quiet. I went and sat. They gave me some corner somewhere. I went and sat there and they occupied the days. When any of them came, the supporters shouted. I said, I don't want to be part of this party jamboree. Independence is a solemn national celebration that is celebrated at Independence Square. And everybody could come. Today, they bust their supporters in. They have party flags and they are wearing party t-shirts. I don't want to be part of the party jamboree. Dash. Mr. Mahama realized that he had been invited to a place and GBC was ordered to take the camera off him. They didn't want to give him any prominence. When he entered the stadium, there was quiet because he had gone into the stronghold of the party in power. How stronghold? They burst the people in there and it was state managed. Don't clap for anybody from the other party. Clap, even if it is not funny. Clap, 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 clap for the party in power. He was smart enough to realize it. And he left. He decided that he would not be part of it again as long as this party is in power. Now when he was giving his speech, he went ahead to say, he is an Nkrumahist and he will celebrate Ghana every day the Nkrumah way. But if it's going to be hijacked by political parties, it would be in defiance of, in negation of Nkrumah's independence. And therefore, he will not be part of it. I support him. I do support him. None of us wanted the independence they celebrated this way. What the Chief Justice, former Chief Justice said, should have been adhered to. It would have been an opportunity to build boreholes. To build schools and hospitals. Tamale Hospital. They've run out of vaccines. The whole Ghana. No vaccines. People are going to be sick. You don't care about that. You care about little children coming out to march. And sing your praises. And then you fly in a helicopter. Because you are too old to walk. You cannot even inspect the parade walking. You have to be in a car that takes you around. Why? Who forced you? We can have these things. When the storm is blown away, not at the time that you are running after the IMF and the World Bank begging for money. But one thing President Mahama said, which I would like to share my opinion on, is this. The Independence Day celebration should not always be at the Independence Square. Yes, Nkrumah held it there. But taking it to other regions, year after year, would also help to open those regions up. 
especially if we are going to stop this kind of celebration and then use the money to build different, 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 different regions of the country. It will make sense. May I also make a suggestion? When it comes to Independence Day celebration, as I said, why don't we invite different, different schools from across the whole Ghana, one school from each region, come, let us join and do the parade in Accra. Or just a few members in Accra or some other part of Ghana. Only one venue, but represented by the whole nation, is captured on TV rather than doing it in all 16 regions and spending so much money. That's my suggestion. Better still, come here. Better still, for now, shelve it. Let the president come out and talk to the people on TV, on radio. We don't mind if we don't even do it for the next 10 years and we see development going on. We can do the rest of it on TV. I don't know how many people agree with this, but that is what I think. Yes. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kuku Shodemo. And here, we speak truth to power. Come here. Next thing I would like to look at is rolling on your screen. And I'm taking you all the way to Burkina Faso. Crazy Burkina B witch doctor heals multitudes. There was this lady they said was crazy. Look at her. Young lady. They said she was crazy. She had started seeing things that were not existing. They chained her to a baobab tree. Beat her up. Her family said she was crazy and therefore she was chained. While she was chained, she was going through some spiritual upliftment. Today, my brother, my sister, when you go to Burkina Faso, thousands of people, tens of thousands of people gather at a certain big location to be healed by this woman. Run the story. Watch young woman in Burkina Faso becomes famous for her healing powers. And this is from Africa News. Thousands of people have come from near and far on Sunday to an area some 30 kilometers outside of Ouagadougou to see a young woman. It's an interesting story, isn't it? Come here. 20-year-old Amsetu Neklema, also known as Aja, is famous across Burkina Faso for what people believe are her healing powers. In this country, with every weak health, uh, with a very weak health infrastructure, and where traditional beliefs remain strong for people who are desperate or unable to afford treatment, she is a godsend. Yes, she is a godsend. As a child, her life was not easy. Haunted by visions, her parents thought she was crazy. Even although she told them this was not the case. There was a three-year-old who couldn't walk. And I swore on my life that I would treat her. For 12 days, he would walk. When I gave medicine, the child there got up on the 11th day and started walking. So on the 12th day, people started suspecting, she said. Aja says, some call it madness. Others say it is not. But just three years after her first healing, her reputation continues to grow. Today, I don't even know why God gave me power to this point. If I get up and I say I want this, he gives it to me. If I say someone is sick, if, if I see someone sick, if I say I will help him, he helps the person. Her healings are free, but she welcomes offerings from the people who come. Who come. Buildings have sprung up around the site, funded by wealthy donors and traders. Stalls clutter the crowded road uh, to her tent on a patch of 
open land. Burkina Faso is a predominantly Muslim country and she uses religious prayers, traditional medicine and spell clearing ceremonies to heal. Officially, only 9% of Burkina Bays consider themselves animists, a figure that is reportedly largely underestimated. Aja would declare powerlessness in desperate cases or those outside the field of expertise and people believe in her integrity. The patient was suffering from recurrent vertigo. She took medication from all sides but to no avail. An acquaintance told us about her and we came. When we came, everything went back to normal and he was able to return to work, said Awa Tiendre Buogo, a relative of uh, the patient. As a child, Aja says she was considered crazy and was rejected, beaten and chained by her family. But today she thinks her torturers, uh, she thanks her torturers, uh, saying that because of the way they treated her, she knows how to take care of people. Wow. That's a story. The family thought she was crazy. Tied her up, beat her up, tied her to a baobab tree. Now she's healing tens of thousands of people. Let me show you a video of what she does when she's healing people. A sea of people have come from near and far this Sunday to see a young woman. 20-year-old Aja is famous across Burkina Faso for what people believe are her healing powers. For those who are desperate, or unable to afford treatment, she is a godsend. At the beginning of the madness, I told my parents I'm not crazy, but they didn't believe. There was a three-year-old who couldn't walk, and I swore with my life that I would treat him for 12 days and he would walk. When I gave medicine, the child got up on the 11th day on it suspecting. Some say it's madness, others say it's not. As incantations ring through the air, Adja walks among the crowd. She uses Muslim prayer, traditional medicine and spell clearing ceremonies to heal. Today I don't even know why God gave me power to this point. If I get up and say I want this, he gives it to me. If I see someone sick, if I say I'll help them, he helps the person. In this country where traditional beliefs remain strong, her healings are free, but she does accept offerings. The patient was suffering from recurrent vertigo. We took medication from all sides, but to no avail. An acquaintance told us about Aja and we came. When we came, Everything went back to normal. He managed an orange money booth and was able to return to work. Aja will declare her powerlessness in desperate cases or those outside of her field of expertise, and people believe in her integrity. As a child haunted with visions, she says she was considered crazy, rejected, beaten and chained by her family. But today, she thanks her torturers, saying that because of the way they treated her, she knows how to take care of people. So that's a beautiful young lady called Aja. And you've seen what she's doing. Spirituality. Treating and healing so many different people. The masses are going there and getting healed. Come here. I am happy to see some of these things. But we must be able to draw a thin line between spirituality and madness. I see a stepping on the stomachs of people. I hope that soon this one does not turn into asking people to eat human excreta beating up people all in the name of religion and spirituality. People are being buried alive before you realize all the tens of thousands of followers are told that the world is coming to an end so they should set themselves on fire. In fact, some of these things have happened in Africa 
and some other parts of the world. We still remember the case of Guyana, where such a sad thing happened. We don't want to recount that anymore. I'm happy to see the African tradition grow. I'm happy to see the power of the African God rise so high. But at the same time, we must be smart enough to tell when it is becoming madness. Congratulations to Aja. Next time I'm in Nigeria, I will find time and go and visit her. And we might be able to bring you an original story from Black Empire TV. In the interim, what is the purpose of the witch doctor? Should you encourage the witch doctor or discourage him? We'll find out from a quote I have for you. Hey! Well <laughs>
continue with the story. Salid said the continuous illegal immigration aims to turn Tunisia into only an African country with no belonging to the Arab and Muslim wells. Did you hear that? So changing the demographic composition, when we talk about demography, we are talking about what kind of people live here. Are they black? Are they white? Where are they from? How many males? How many females? That's demography. Now the president here is saying that illegal immigrations into his country are intentional and it's been orchestrated to turn his country into a black country so that they will do away with the Arab, listen, and Muslim mentality. Can you believe this? That's what the president said. A lot of black people are coming into this country before we realize our country is going to be called a black country. You are on the black continent, asshole. We are on the black continent. This is Africa. Because you are light skin doesn't make you white. I have told you. The other day I talked about Morocco and the Moroccan embassy was not happy with me and invited me over to a discussion. My brother, my sister, I avoided the discussion because tempests were so high. During the World Cup, when the whole of Africa was supporting Morocco, this was the same racial sentiments, racist sentiments that Morocco brought up. Our victory is for the Arab world and for Muslims. That's what they said. This idiot is repeating the same thing. He says that black people are coming into his country, Tunisia. They want to turn it black so that they will wipe away the Muslim and the Arab mentality. That's what he's saying. Adding that the ones behind this scheme are involved in human trafficking. The African Union strongly condemned the statements by the Tunisian government, calling them racial and shocking. Now the chairperson reminds all countries, particularly African Union member states, to honor their obligations under international law and relevant African uh, Union instruments to treat all migrants with dignity wherever they come from. Refrain from radicalized hate speech that could bring people to harm and prioritize their safety and human rights. The AU said, now the Gabonese, Gabonese embassy in Tunisia said many migrants from sub-Saharan countries no longer feel safe in Tunisia and offered to repatriate its citizens who have until Sunday to register for voluntary repatriation. In another speech on February 23, Salid maintained there is no racial discrimination in Tunisia and said our African brothers residing in Tunisia legally are welcome in the country. Tunisian authorities arrested 58 African migrants on Friday after they allegedly crossed the border and resided illegally in the country, state news agency TAP reported on Sunday. Meanwhile, Ivory Coast said, 145 citizens will be repatriated on Saturday. The state Ivorian press agency reported on Friday. Mali also announced that voluntary repatriation of its citizens from Tunisia, according to a Thursday report by state newspaper Le Sur. Uh, yes. Meanwhile, Guinea posted images on Twitter of Janta leader Colonel Mamadi Dumbuya welcoming returning Guineans at the airport in Conakry on Saturday and last Wednesday. My brother, this is the Africa that Nkrumah was talking about. The independence of Ghana is meaningless until all these people are liberated. Today, there's political independence, yet there's so much racism in Africa. People of the same destiny are walloping and beating and killing each other. It's so sad. 
A whole president. Show me his face again. A whole president comes out to tell the whole nation that there is a certain scheme to turn his country into a black country. But they are not blacks. I, if I had a way, I would quickly repatriate all of them to Europe. That's where they claim they belong. Morocco, remember a few months back before the World Cup, had a lot of African people, black people, shot and killed those who were trying to leave Morocco. And you want me to be friends with Moroccan people? Am I crazy? Why? Why should I be friends with people who are killing me? If one African dies in Morocco, I see myself as part of that one black man who got killed. If I see one country trying to run away from blackness of Africa, in fact, I renounce and denounce that country. That's what Nkrumah taught me. Anybody who doesn't want to be part of Africa should not be forced to be part of it. Let them live quietly. After they fail to be part of the European Union, all of a sudden, Africans have become a target. That notwithstanding, dash him away. Come here. That notwithstanding, it is a clarion call on all our dirty leaders who are celebrating independence that is independence of nothing. When the money, the wealth, should have been used to uplift its own citizens. If Ghana was okay, I am not sure they would be running to Morocco, Tunisia, and all the other countries in North Africa that do not want to be seen as black. Why are you treating our citizens like this? Is Tunisia better than Ghana? Now, yes, because our leaders are silly. No common sense. For that matter, countries that gain their independence later are becoming better than us. Our leaders have no common sense to think. After Nkrumah, it looked like it was a curse. All the leaders who came had very, very little brains, except one or two. It's sad and it hurts me. I travel around Africa and I see how black people are treated like animals. In fact, in some countries, animals are even treated better than black people by their own African people. There's a war between Francophone and Anglophone people, so-called. There's a war between Muslims and Christians. Today we have jihadists all over the place. They are killing fellow Africans because of religion. Tribal wars all over the place. Go to Boku. Two brothers are fighting. Mampruses and Kusasas from one great-grandfather, Bewa. That the Gombes and other people call the man Bewa. Kusasis call him Banwa. Bewa, Banwa, the same thing. From the same source. To the two brothers are shooting and killing each other. In Boku. What happened to brotherliness? We can disagree as much as we can. But to kill each other. Like Cain and Abel. I didn't see this coming. What happened? Tribal war, religious wars, ethnic wars, religious wars all over Africa to the point that now we have jihadism. Is this independence of Africa? The one that Nkrumah said, until the whole of Africa is liberated, the independence of this country is meaningless. Yet some people are bent on dividing us. Today you can't go to Burkina Faso. Terrorism. Mali. Terrorism. Timbuktu. Desecrated and destroyed. In our own country, Ghana. Tribal wars. This ethnic group says it's superior to this. 
This other one says, oh, they are bigger than the other ones. How come the other ones are called this and they are not called that? Thing? Bruhaha. Why? Will there ever be peace? Will there ever be peace? Why? Two brothers. Look at the other time in Dagbong. Two brothers belonging to the same ethnic group. Just two different families. In fact, even the same family, different gates, were warring against each other. Aburu and Dani. Asante Hini had to come in. Some other people had to come in after several years of installing no chief. Why? And you can't talk about it. When you talk a little about it, they are looking for your head. When you talk about Bokwe, they are looking for your head. When you talk about another, hey, your head. You talk about, hey, they are specialists in killing. When you kill all of us, take the chief tansy and rule over goats and sheep. Why? Brothers. Brothers. Why? You cannot agree anymore. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Koko Shonamo, where we speak truth to power. When we return, we shall talk some more. Hey! Well, uh... <laughs> <laughs>
their thesis. There are people all over. Sometimes you don't even need to sit in the classroom. Masters, PhDs, they are writing and taking money. So the degree is no more a pedigree. Even in the days where the degree was almost a pedigree, trust me, people were lacking. You go to the school, study, come out, no practical experience. You have the book knowledge, but you do not know exactly how to put that knowledge into use practically. So, you are only holding a paper. No experience. I'm glad that this is coming. That's why we have a lot of armchair scientists in Ghana. A lot. They go to school. They read all about the chemicals and read all about biology, chemistry, physics and all that. They know. But take them to a practical field. What the Japanese child can do practically. The professor can dare never even approach. True or false. So practical education needs to come in. It looks like we have relegated that to the vocational schools. But no, every field needs practicals. It doesn't, even if you are studying French, you need practical French. You know what that is? In fact, the book I used in studying my French in school was called Practical French. One, two, three, four, five. Practical French. You have to practice it. The schools must make sure that People practice that. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushonemu, where we speak truth to power. Next! And this one is going to be very quick. It says, Bad Omen, as Nigeria gets food relief from World Bank. I woke up this morning and saw the headline that the World Bank is sending some billions to Nigeria and some other countries for food relief. Show me that headline. Watch this. Nigeria. Others set to benefit from World Bank's $12 billion food relief fund. And this is 5th March. Read the story. It says what? The World Bank has disbursed $12 billion across the world to help combat food insecurity. Almost half of the entire fund was sent to Africa. Why? The World Bank's donation was based on the details in a report which noted that domestic food costs remained high across the world, particularly in low and medium income countries. Dash. Nigeria is a beautiful country. This is the president. He's the president who is outgoing. Muhammad Buhari. That is the president of Nigeria. Yes. Nigeria has a beautiful flag. And that flag, anywhere you are in the world and you see it, you will recognize it. Nigeria has huge farms all over. My brother, my sister, and these farms, they have so many different crops, so much food that is produced in Nigeria from cassava. Nigeria is one of the leading countries in the world in the production of cassava. This is a cassava farm. Why does Nigeria need food relief? Do you know what it means to say food relief? It means you don't have adequate food and they are giving you fund to be able to patch up. Kwame Nkrumah. Kwame Nkrumah. The Osajifo was looking at the Congo Valley. He saw how rich it was. And he knew that he could turn it into the basket of food for the whole of Africa. We will have so much we would have to export to Europe and the rest of the world. They overthrew him before he could start that project. Congo Valley. 
if any continent should be hungry, it should never be Africa. In Africa, anywhere you go and spit, it grows. Why do we need food relief? Why do we need food relief? And the thing about food relief is this. Soon they will come with their so-called food relief and say they are supporting you to be able to put your farms in order. They will dictate to you what you should plant. They would ask you to plant things that will feed their factories. Not the food that you would eat. So every time you would need food relief. I don't know how many people understand this. If you need maize, cassava, millet to feed your people. They won't give you a chance to do that. You will plant commercial crops to feed their factories. And every time you will depend on them for food. Until Africa learns to be truly independent food-wise, this food relief would always come. Well, my name is Black Rasta. Today we've taken it so coolly. To God be the glory. I love you. When we return tomorrow, we'll have more to say. It's been the Black Pot. Remember, our numbers are on the screen. Pick up the numbers and do business with us. We would love to advertise your product. It's going to be big. We are the biggest when it comes to the world of Pan-Africanism. And remember to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's called the Black Empire Media. Subscribe to that channel and hit on the notification button so you will not miss any of our stories. Hey! Well oh. Oh. <laughs>